Hi, and welcome to Obscurity Works. I'm your host, Jay. And today we're going to be talking about these leather and wood extrusion things. Uh, at the moment, what we see in front of you is these three containers that we made, uh, Aaron and I made, and we're going to show you how we made. The basic idea between, behind them is we needed, you can see the shop is a mess. And that's because uh, in having moved here, we are trying to get this whole thing set up and running in a way that uh, accomplishes all the projects we're trying to do. And what we need is a bunch of small storage, middle sized storage, bigger storage, and a lot of the projects we're working on right now are oriented to those things. And these are the small ones. And so what we wanted were some containers uh, to put things in. And I wanted to get back to leather working. I had done some when I was a kid and I want to get back to it including uh, you know, proper stitch work and all that kind of thing. But in the meantime, I, was, I had seen some, some photos show up on Etsy and Pinterest of some purses and laptop bags and things that were all using the same construction technique. And I wanted to give it a try and I thought these, these projects might be a great way to give them a chance. So uh, Aaron and I went and got some, some hardwoods. So this is maple and these are um, oak. And we got some leather and designed these as a, as a proof of concept to see how the, the construction technique might work. Might work how the materials work, and along the way to get some containers. So what are they? All right, so the basic idea is the sides, so this side and this side are both made out of uh, just a, in this case, a square of wood or a rectangle of wood. And then there's a, a rectangle of leather that forms uh, a sling that ties them together and provides a little bit more rigidity than you would probably think, uh, given that we're talking about leather here. But relatively simple. It's glued with barge contact cement. And in a couple of these cases, we also use some uh, cut tack, some copper nail type things uh, to fasten those. We'll show you some of that and talk a little bit about what works and what doesn't at the end. And uh, it turned out really well. These construction techniques work, work out uh, amazingly well. And the nice thing is that because we're basically talking about something where the shape of the wood on, on each end is what determines the shape of this whole extrusion. So it's, it's like you've got one piece and then however wide you make this piece of leather is how how wide, how long or wide, depending on how you talk about it, the, the eventual piece in the middle is. So if you were just to make this the size and shape of uh, the profile of a laptop and stretch it out and extrude, you can make this into a laptop bag. You could also change the dimensions and the shape of this to turn it into a purse. You could change it to be a longer piece, which is where we've got our Sharpies and our uh, mechanical pencils stored in this one. And then this one is more of a toolbox kind of thing where we actually, instead of leaving the, the top open, we put a, an additional piece of leather, we extended the leather and uh, it's got a, a lid on it. And we're eventually gonna put fasteners and clasps and everything. But the goal of this was just to try out this technique of the wood the leather, the glue, and, and the, the fastening nails and see how well that worked before we, ex we started getting fancy about decorating the sides of these, carving the sides of these, wood burning it, uh, changing the shapes, adding straps and handles and fasteners and buckles and, and all that sort of stuff. We wanted first to prove out that this worked and along the way get some containers. And uh, at the end of this episode, if you would like to win this particular one, the single unit, uh, it will be up and available uh, for you to enter to win. And all you gotta do is check out at the end of the video and I will explain how to do that. In the meantime, let's get started. We'll go over how this all came together, how these pieces came together. And at the end, we'll talk a little bit about what worked and what didn't. So this is the first one with a phone for scale, to give you an idea of size. Next one is twice that size, some wood scraps in it just to show you that and then the larger one which we ended up making a toolbox for leather working materials. We started at the chop saw by cutting our sides for our smallest one which are five inch squares. We used that first piece which we measured as our template to make sure they all were the same size and then uh, we applied water-based polyurethane to them to give them a little bit of a finish. Didn't really want to wait a really long time for things to dry. We cut out some cardboard templates for our leather in case we want to make more of these the same size. We aimed for a five inch width of leather, which is the width of those pieces of wood we had just cut. 
and 15 inches long, which gives us the three sides, three five by five sides of the of the leather that, that covers the, those sides leaving the top open. So we took that template to our hot leather hide and using it all, we scratched the outline of that on there so we had a marker for it. We placed this over the space on the hide that actually had the cattle brand on it, which on a lot of projects might go wasted uh, because people don't want that blemish there, but we decided to feature it as a part of this project and therefore not waste it. So once that was marked, we got out the knife and cut those pieces out or that piece out using a straight edge. You do not want to use a plastic straight edge for this kind of cutting because if the knife slips even the slightest bit, you will create a groove in the ruler and you will be uh, forever, the knife will go into that groove uh, too easily. So we took out the barge cement and applied that to the width of the wood onto the leather. This contact cement gets applied to both surfaces and then it's allowed to dry for five to 15 minutes and it can dry a little bit longer too, but as soon, then as soon as you um, attach the two surfaces together, the contact cement does its job and it's glued together. So when it was time to assemble this, we took the two glued surfaces. Uh, we each grabbed a side so we could get this assembled quickly. And you do have to place it very, very carefully because you get one chance at this. When contact cement touches another surface with contact cement on it, it immediately does its job and is not going to let go. This kind of contact cement is what's used to hold shoes together, so this is really strong stuff. And so you want to make sure you line it up really well before you press things down and, and touch the two surfaces together. We then applied for the remaining surface as we were going to effectively roll the wood surface onto these as we glue them together. You can see that this the built-in brush in the barge can does an okay job, but it was fairly hard to do a really precise line. There are other applicators made out of silicone and such that can be used to more precisely apply this. And I'm probably going to get get a couple of those because I'm, I wasn't thrilled with how well uh, the built-in brush worked. It worked okay and got the job done, but I would like a little bit more ability to, to lay this on more carefully in the future. But we did use it for all three of the projects that are in this video. All right, so you can see that the gloss of that contact cement is, is gone now, which is an indicator, if you weren't watching the clock carefully, that the, the contact cement is probably dry. The other two surfaces of the wood that we are about to touch to that leather have also been treated the same. This. We used several techniques for doing, it, uh, doing these over the course of the three projects to see which ones worked well. This worked well with two people. It would not be a great technique if you were by yourself. It did have the benefit of allowing us to press down on the wood in, in a sort of uniform pressure, whereas like pressing the leather onto the wood would be a little less even. So then here's a, another close-up photo of uh, the completed project. So we moved on to a bigger one. and. The bigger one is 10 inches by 15 inches. So we cut out our template, went to the leather. This is a bison hide, where the previous one was a, a standard cow hide. This is from the American bison. Which is the same hide that we used for the, uh, well, later used for the larger three module sort of toolbox that we that we built. All right, so you can see we've got the other side of the hide ready so we can apply our glue. And this is us trying to figure out the exact layout and where we wanted to put um, our sides and then where we wanted to also put the, the middle piece, which we wanted this to have two chambers in it. You wouldn't have to, uh, but we wanted to sort of do this three, so we did a dry run mock-up of how this would fit together. Um, you see the wood doesn't exactly want to stay put as we're doing it. Uh, 
we marked that off with the all so that we could maybe get a better uh, application of the glue without going over. And to help us assemble better. We applied contact cement. You can see the brush still doesn't do a great job. Um, maybe it would in better hands. This is me applying it and doing the best I could, uh, but still getting bleed over outside of our marked area. And then applying it to the third space. All right, then again, we had contact cement on all the wood and are placing all three. And you can see there is definitely uh, spillover on the sides. In the use of these, it hasn't mattered. Nothing has stuck to that or anything like that as we've used them. As we went forward, I did get a little bit better in my application technique with this brush, but it is still not the best. And you can see on the project mat underneath there's spillage that happened as I was moving things around. All of which is mostly to tell you that if you've never worked with this material before, I wouldn't wear your good clothes while working with it or you may get some on places you didn't anticipate. Try to make sure we had coverage everywhere and then applied it onto the wood as well. which is obviously a little bit easier with the brush than applying it between two lines is because there just only is the surface to work with that there is. But you can see this, this glue is a little bit goopy to work with. All right, so this is the final assembled output. We did the same, you know, rolled that on and did it. And then we moved on to trying to use these um, upholstery tacks and because of their, their height, you want to use the pliers to, to hold that sort of a nail in place as you do as you hammer them in. But every single one of these that we hammered in, the wire that is the nail itself would either resist going into the wood, or as soon as it did, the, the whole thing would just bend over and, and twist. So, all right, so this is the, the third one that we built. We went back to the, the, the uh, saw, new template cut out different, this is out of a piece of oak instead of out of the maple that we did the other two. And cut a few of our, our sides here. We use that that uh, piece of plastic as the uh, thing to hammer rivets and whatnot with leather stuff. So we used it as, we wanted to be able to fit that in the base of the container. So that was used to, to determine the size as we worked on the, the height of this whole thing. And this is kind of the way the design of this stuff happens is it, it, you can do it on paper, but sometimes it's much easier to, to visualize what it's going to be like if you actually work it out with um, the pieces that you're going to eventually use. You see here we used a regular utility knife blade instead of an X-Acto knife for this one. Um, I actually think I prefer that to the X-Acto knife. There's a little bit more... Um, it's a little beefier of a handle to hold on to, to be able to press down hard. Um, and so we picked our one space in this case to make our base and then applied our glue on the lines for the remaining sides. And this is a, sort of an example of what happens when you try to do this more with one person. So I was assembling and Aaron was holding, was, was shooting with the camera. And you end up with a little bit less ability to do this rolling technique with it. But it still can work. And you see that you get that really even pressure when you're able to push down on the piece of wood. And so I just did them one at a time instead of like we did with the previous ones where two of us did it at the exact same time.
And uh, you'll note this, these pieces of wood, I did not actually even bother putting a finish on. They're shop tools and I'm not super worried about how well that finish would work. All right, so once we had done all of our spots, we switched over to these copper cut tacks, which are also sort of a, an upholstery nail kind of thing. And these worked considerably better for assembly. And like with the upholstery tacks, it works really well to use a needle nose pliers of some sort to actually hold them instead of trying to use your fingers. at least to get them started. All right, and so then we we put all of our supplies into the uh, new leather toolbox and saw that everything fit. Most of this is a starter kit that we bought for some more normal stitched kind of leather projects coming forward, and then you'll see the flap comes over the top. So this is our final toolbox version with no clasps or handles or anything like that on it. All right, so as you can see, we have our three final pieces. I'm overall happy with how they came out. There's some things that worked and there's some things that didn't work. work. Uh, what, what worked overall is the, the glue is very, very strong. Once it touches, that's the end of it, as I mentioned. And uh, so that worked out fairly well. You can, if you pull a little hard, um, these will come loose, but through actual regular use, this one sat on my desk for several weeks uh, in an office and worked out great. There was no difficulty in, uh, in things staying fastened. Uh, you, you really do have to abuse it in order for that to come loose. The uh, original tacks that we used, which were um, this style, which is this rounded uh, domed piece with, a, with sort of a wire nail, and we used the smaller ones that were more appropriately sized for this. But as you saw in the video, these did not work at all. They will not go in straight. The, the place where the, the wire meets the top is just not strong enough to handle going into hardwood. And so those didn't work. However, the copper cut nails, which are these, uh, they're really small. Um, but they're, they're uh, much more of a... Uh, integrated piece with the head and the and the uh, shank of the nail are integrated together so holds together much more stably goes in fairly well uh, the one thing I will do next time on the next set of these that we do is I will pre-drill holes for these uh, because this one here where it went in uh, the wood actually cracked uh, because of where it went in and that uh, I should have pre-drilled that hole uh, so that's it worked well what didn't um, like I say, overall, we're going to extend, probably put handles on things, particularly this one, which is a rather large uh, toolbox kind of thing, so that it has uh, the ability to pick it up and carry it. And we're probably gonna make some laptop bags and some other kinds of bags out of this technique now that we've seen how well it works. And we'll be making videos of that stuff uh, as well. But if what you want is to have this one for your very own, just join our mailing list. Anybody who's on the mailing list will be uh, entered to win. And in a few weeks, uh, I will pick a winner and send this out to that person. So you can join the mailing list by going to obscurityworks.email in your browser and sign up. And you'll be notified whenever there's new videos, whenever there's new projects, if we uh, have more giveaways, if, we have, if we're looking for feedback, all that stuff is gonna be, it goes out to the newsletter subscribers and we will not sell your address or spam you with uh, stuff that's unrelated to the video channel or to the videos and, and the shop that we have here. So, with all that said, uh, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time.